And hello again, everybody. We have started our recording for tonight. We're going to get right into week three. So excited to see you all. Let's see. One moment. Okay, so let me know if you, as soon as you can see the, um, yay, as soon as you can see the slides, just let me know, please. Hi, Osman. Did I say it right, Osman? Hi, Trevor. Oh, no problem. Hi, Tamia. Is it Tamia? Okay, thank you, Osman. Sharonda, is that your name? Thank yeah. you, Sharonda. Oh my gosh, I, my stepsister's name was Sharonda. That's so cool. <laughs> you don't see a lot of Sharondas, but they're awesome people. It's no, nice. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, so I'm glad everybody can see it. We are going to just dive right on in. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> yes, I'm back to my snorting habits again. Oh, actually, hold on just a second. I have to stop it. Will it stop? One moment. Okay. I'm just gonna fix something real quick. Does anybody have any questions about the due dates that we had for this week? I know everything was a little bit different because we, uh, we extended the due dates a bit for the week one assignment. So I just wanted to make sure nobody had any questions about that because we were trying to accommodate everybody getting their internet or whatever it is you might need to have back up due to um, the hurricane that we experienced here in Florida. And then it kind of traveled up to a couple of other states. So the school has been so awesome about making sure that everybody has enough time to get those week one assignments in. So does anybody have any question about that while I'm fixing this? If you do, just please just let me know. Hi, Andrew, which was terrible, by the way. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate that. Yes, I'm glad that we all made it safely through the hurricane and everything. It was a lot, <laughs> but we are here, so I'm glad that's happening. Okay, so we're going to put it back up. Okay, we're good to go. I went ahead and fixed that. So, so this week, um, Anybody questions? No questions? 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 Not yet. Okay. All right. So this week we're going to focus on a few different things this week. It'll be, um, it'll be a nice way to kind of break from what we usually do. Yes, the hurricanes are going away. <laughs> are you so funny? Okay. Um, this week we're going to focus on some different things. So I want you guys to think about it as we're going through. It'll be a little bit different. We do still have some of the cognitive uh, dissonance that we discussed in the first few sessions, I mean, the first few classes. However, this week we get to look at some of the resources and discussions and things like that. So for tonight, we're gonna discuss resources for the week. And if you had the chance to look at the workbook for this week, you'll notice that the word resource is mentioned a lot, like quite a bit this week. So that lets you know that it's a pretty important thing. So you're gonna be also talking about finding inspiration and ways to use resources and also how to find inspiration and get through creative blocks, excuse me, which is very important for what you're doing as you move through your educational experience and into your, your um, professional experiences that you're gonna have. So we just wanna make sure that we touch on that now. That way it can just be back there in the back of your brain. This is how I get through this. We talked about this in my second class, things like that, because you, you will be able to use some of those creative um, gifts that you have as you move, move through this experience. So we're also gonna talk about the resources as it pertains to the things that are available here for you at LA Film School as students. So as students, you have, you have quite a few things that are at your disposal that they make available to you. Thank you, Sharonda. There are three that you will need for this week for this assignment, and we're gonna talk about those three resources. 
within this uh, live lesson. So we're also going to talk about, like I said, finding inspiration and the Los Angeles Film School resources for students. So I want you all to think about what is a resource? If anybody wants to either unmute or say it in the chat, what do you feel like a resource is? Access to an online database. Yes, that's a resource. Access to an online Yes, thank you. Hi, Mr. Ben. Yes, that's very true. <laughs> Anybody else? That's a really good resource. Thank you. Anybody else? Information. An exclusive information. online database, more importantly. Yes. Yes. yes, information. Thank you, Eric. And also an exclusive online database. Uh, Tamia says informational knowledge. That's a resource too. And it could be anything. You guys, I mean, just be think, think broad about this. What is a resource? There's, there's no box. There is no box. <laughs> I want you to think about that. So it doesn't have to be what you traditionally think it, it is. But as the book defines it, as your workbook defines it, a resource is anything you can use as an advantage, asset, or support. So that's anything. So now that you know, hmm, it's anything that I can use as an advantage, asset, or support. And it also means anything that adds, adds or provides value to you. It can be a physical thing like a laptop or something tangible like your education or something that's not tangible that you can hold in your hand like knowledge, the knowledge that you get from your education. That's a resource. You can, you can hold your actual degree in your hands, but you can't hold the knowledge. I know all this knowledge. You can't do that, but you can actually have that knowledge and that is a resource for you. How, of course, in your, in your different professions that you're gonna have once you graduate, or some of you before you even graduate, you could have offers from different companies and things like that, that you have understanding and knowledge of different topics. So that's a resource. I don't know if any of you have ever thought about it like that. So let's talk about some other resources. So when you think about it for a moment, I invite you to look around you in your space that you're in. Just like take a look around. What would you say is a resource as you look around your space? What are some of the resources that come to mind that you have available that are around you? And again, you can unmute or you can type it in the chat. Well, my camera, my camera is a resource to make money. Yes, yes, your camera is a resource to make money. My camera is a resource in order to teach my lecture. Very good, that was awesome. Tamia says phone, just says my computer, my phone, very true. Cause some people actually do use their phone camera to film things. You know, some people get film uh, awards and things from things that they filmed on their iPhones or on their phones. It's pretty awesome. So that is a resource that you can use for that. Very good. There's also things like your computer. You're using a computer. If you have a car, those are all things that are resources. So that's just something to think about as you move forward. You might think, oh, I don't have any, but you do, you actually have a lot. So I'm um, actually at the grocery store. Could the grocery buggy be my resource? Could the what? <laughs> the grocery buggy be my resource? It is, a, it is a resource in order to take you around in order to hold everything. <laughs> Because I don't know if any of you have ever done this, but I've done this, and I should not, but I've done this, where you go in and you think, oh, I'm just going to get one or two things, and you end up coming to the front. Yeah, I think that's why I said that. You have Eric, you come and check out with all your arms tight, your fingers are stuck like this. Because I'm literally to walking through the grocery hands. store. I'm yes. walking through the grocery store like that. Now nah, I got to go and get a bucket. <laughs> Yes, or I'm just like one more thing, and you're holding that last thing with your finger. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Just get a cart, woman. Like people look at me like that. So <laughs> the carts are a resource, but I do not want to get a cart because I came in here for one thing. <laughs> 
So that's a very good point. Cards are a resource. Thank you. And Ben says a view from my front window. That is a resource. That can be a resource for inspiration. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Thank you, Ben. But thank you, whoever said the uh, card. Who said that? Because I, I your, your picture didn't come up on the thing. Whoever said the card, that was genius. So now we're going to talk about defining inspiration. Oh, okay, it was Sharonda. Thank you, Sharonda. <laughs> We're gonna talk about defining inspiration. Now that we have a good idea of what a resource is, I want you all to think about how you define your inspiration and kind of how, how would you define it as, it as it pertains to your creativity and your resources and what you have available to you. So how would you define inspiration? Artists. Okay, artists can be inspiration for you. Yep. The people around you, other artists. That was good. Thank you. I was going to say peers. Yes, your peers. Thank you, sir. All right, Ryan. <laughs> Life experiences. Is it Mills? Songs. Is your name Mills? Mills. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. Okay, Mills. Life experiences. All right. That's a good, that's a good one. You're, it can be a lot of inspiration depending on, you know, what you experience or what you go through every day can be an inspiration to you, your past, your future, your hopes, your dreams, all of that. So that's really good. Um, ben says it's hard to define something subjective. That's true. It can be kind of difficult. Uh, Sharana says animals. Yep. Your animals can be your inspiration. Yes. Sharonda says, my kids, oh my goodness, yes, so much inspiration there. That's awesome, thanks. So the way that the workbook defines inspiration is the process of stimulating your senses to do something creative, okay? So it's the process of stimulating your senses to do something creative. And this reminds me of a movie, excuse me, and I always mention this because it's, it's such an impactful part of the movie. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever seen the movie Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events. The movie, not the show. Have you ever seen, seen that movie, everybody? It's got Jim Carrey and a few other people in it. Yes? Okay. So I don't know if you remember the young lady in it, the, the older sister, but she would she would seriously take a few moments and and set up a ritual it's kind of like a ritual because every time she does it, she gets sparked with inspiration in order to create something. She had this, this ribbon and she would take the ribbon and anytime she would take that ribbon out and tie it on her hair, everybody knew she was about to come up with an idea. Because you have you, did you all notice that in the movie? When she would take that ribbon out and she would tie it on her hair? Yes. Thank you, Sharonda. And then you would, she would start to create something. It would be, it's like a MacGyver moment, I'm guessing, if you all have ever heard of MacGyver. But um, she would just start creating something, a gadget or something to get them out of a jam. So that was her process of really setting her mind in order to start really processing her inspiration and stimulating her senses and getting ready to do something great in that moment. So that could be a way that you could spark ins uh, inspiration is to have some sort of thing that you do. Some people will take their rubber band or their hair tie and they'll, they'll go, okay, my hair tie is going to be my, as soon as I put it on, you know, I, I fiddle with it and I start coming up with ideas and things like that. So that's something that you could do as well. So I just want you to think about it. It's the process of stimulating your senses to do something creative, whatever that may be. So <clears throat> I want you all to think about that for just a moment. Do you have any sort of ways that you stimulate your senses in order to be creative? Anything that you do in particular that as soon as you do that, that's when you kind of put your figurative thinking cap on. Some people actually do have caps that they wear. They'll just like, it's a special hat they wear. And when they put it on, they feel like different. Almost like a, a lucky rabbit's foot or something. Does anybody have anything like that that they do? I know I do. When I clean, I seem to get inspired. So either when I'm cleaning or something like that, it's something that has to do with cleaning or doing something 
or keep staying busy, I start to get inspired. Or sometimes when I'm at work. So Justin says, coffee and smoke. Okay, that could do it. Some people do get very inspired when they smoke. So that's good. Okay. I go, I go, says, I go through the cleaner. process. I go through the process of listening to my uh, my past projects and uh, my music and stuff like that, you know, stuff that I created already. Uh, it helps me to remember that I have that creative streak and it kind of just starts popping back out. Oh, that's awesome, Ryan. Okay. Yeah, I would say that's like good. music, you know, smoke, take a drive. Okay. Music too. Okay. And I think we talked about this before. I'm not sure if you all remember this, but um, music is one of those mediums that really simulates the most um, when it comes to all of your brain activity. It simulates both sides of your brain sim simultaneously, which is really rare when it comes to mediums and things that you do. So music has the power to do that. So when you say, hey, I listen to music and I get inspired, it is, it is such an amazing thing because that is one of those things that music can do. It can inspire you, it can motivate you, it can do all sorts of things because it's it's some simultaneously stimulating both sides of your brain. It's amazing. I don't know if you all already knew it as or not. However, Toby says, listen to certain music. See, yep. Justin says, get, um, what gets you turned up, Justin? I'm just seeing somebody dancing in my brain. Um, oh, the coffee. <laughs> okay, coffee. Uh, ben says cooking. Um, when I'm low on groceries, now looking for a stove makes me creative. Okay, great. Shonda says driving. Mill says wardrobe. Definitely feel the best when I look the best. That's a really good point, Mill. Yeah, it's just something about feeling good about how you look right then and feeling good about it. You just walk different. I don't know. You do. <laughs> Uh, it's nice. <laughs> Let's see. Ben says when I receive a package of um, overstuffed cardboard and afternoons and books. Oh, cool. That's good. You get some book solid afternoons. That's good. Tamia says doing my hair also. Yep. Melissa's in the studio. The shades on. All right. <laughs> I'm, I bet you're just so cool. It's just ridiculous. All right, Mr. Mills. So now we're going to see what do you feel like the relationship is between inspiration and motivation. Do you all think inspiration is different than motivation? And I know we talked about motivation that week one, but do you think that there is a difference between the two or that they overlap or sometimes intersect in order to meet each other somewhere in the middle? What do you feel like the relationship is between the two? Janice says inspires me, it could, to be a breeze, a cloud. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, because you can see things like shapes in the clouds and nobody else can see it, but you can see it like, oh, there's an elephant. I can write a book about an elephant. And then here you go. You got a whole book. So that's good. Thank you, Jen. I feel like they similar. Yes, they are similar. But how... How would you say they intersect? If you feel, do you feel like they kind of overlap? Do you feel like inspiration yeah. and motivation kind of meet somewhere in the middle? I feel like the inspiration is the thought and the motivation is the action. Okay. All right. How do I say your name? Jemai? Jemaya. Jemai? Jemaya. Jemaya. Okay, thank you. So make sure I say it right. Yeah, I was gonna say, people name wrong. Uh, I was gonna say something similar to him. I was gonna say the inspiration is the first idea, you know, and then the motivation is something that you have to up, uphold and keep throughout the whole process. Okay, thank you. You guys are doing great. That's very good. And the, the key word with motivation is the action. So, and then keeping up with the actual process. So that's a great job, Jeremiah and Ryan. Thank you. So to me, it says inspiration is normally an idea as for a motivational is you putting it to work, which is the work, the action that you said, Jemai, all of that stuff. Um, let's see. They're just like a very a ring diagram. Okay. And then Justin, oh my gosh, it's moving so fast. Michael Parker, Mr. Parker with the swish. What is that? 
Justin, what's the Mr. Parker, Mr. Parker with the swish? Was on the spot with what he said. Oh, okay. It's from the show. Is it from the show, Justin? Because I think I know what you're talking about now. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's, he's like, no. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. I thought you were talking about um that man with the show, Mr. Parker. Okay, I'll just keep going. But I watch I watch TV, just so you know. Hi, Tiana. Good to see you again. So Mill says inspiration can come from anywhere, and I and uh, Mill says also feels that motivation comes from within you. All right, good. Just as motivation is to the motive as to why. Uh, you do something and inspiration is the what to do it something did you what did you read the book it sounds like it sounds like you read the book <laughs> how exciting Genesis I have about 2,000 plus pictures of sunsets amazing that's awesome and those sunsets can be so inspiring yes yes let's see okay so this is what I want you all to think about and, and look at real quick. Motivation versus inspiration and how they interact. So like I said, Jemaya, when you said that, it's right here that motivation is to do. You need to motivate a pulling force to action. So when you said that, it, it goes right in line with what we have here for the definition. And then the inspiration is the process of feeling, the driving force um that gets you to actually want to do something and then motivation is actually doing it it's getting it done okay so in linkedin learning there's a video by stefan um Malmu, and it's it has a, a huge following and allows people to understand the argument between what motivation and inspiration do and how they interact and Mamu would argue that the biggest cause for some of our most unremarkable results or solutions isn't the lack of inspiration but the absence of motivation because you can be inspired to do something but if you're not motivated enough in order to actually do it then it's just a, a thought right would you all agree? Yep. Yeah. So again, thank you. So again, the inspiration is external and the motivation, like somebody said, is internal. Inspiration external, the what, what you're doing, what you're planning to do, and then the motivation is internal, the why, what causes you to do it, what gets you set to action, okay? So how do you find inspiration, one may ask? Keeping in mind that the roles of inspiration in the creative process may look a little bit different, okay? So again, one is external, which is inspiration. The other is internal, which is motivation. So if we look at the writings of Twala Tharp, uh, who wrote The Creative Habit, calls the process of looking for new ideas, scratching. Which one would also think, you know, you, know, you think about something, you get an idea, you kind of scratch your head sometimes. But she called, um, this person calls it scratching. She discusses different ways to scratch for ideas that include reading, everyday conversations that you may have, interactions that you may have, um, enjoying other people's work. Like one of you were saying before, you look at other, other artists in order to get inspired. Thinking about nature, which could also be animals, um, as somebody was saying as well, and exploring paradigms and processes of your mentors and heroes. And what are they doing? How did they get things done? Things like that. So she says the key to not really blocking yourself and not feeling that creative block is to leave yourself open to everything. So you don't wanna 
simply kind of put yourself in a creative box per se. You want to instead make sure that your mind and your opportunity is open to everything. Everything that's good and positive. Now, if it's something you don't need to be doing, then you, you don't need to be doing it. However, if it's good and positive, and it's going <laughs> to I see you laughing, but if it's good and positive, and it's going to help you in your career and your process in your life, you be open to it. Was somebody going to say something? So how do you find inspiration? When, when you have it or you hit a creative block, what helps to inspire you? And do you have resources to look to? These are some of the things that we're thinking about. So if you want to unmute or write in the chat, how do you find inspiration if somebody wants to share that? And if somebody wants to kind of share, okay, Jemai says music. I'll be like taking a walk, you know, have my headphones in, do some music. Music? Take a okay. walk, you know. And taking a walk? Yes. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, I sit on my porch and, well, I don't know if y'all can hear me the music in the grocery store, it's kind of loud, but I sit I on my porch. I sit on my porch um, and when I'm in the tub <laughs> or when I'm um, out with like, walking downtown on a boardwalk and stuff like that okay awesome wow. did you what did you say i thought somebody said something after she said on the boardwalk okay so to me it says social media jess says pinterest um is my life Oh, cool. They do have a lot of stuff on Pinterest to really inspire you. Uh, Tiana says music helps me get an idea of how I want my story to go. Well, that's good. Jemiah says making music and writing songs. Glendalyn. What did I say? Glendalyn says sitting by my the lake listening to music helps. Oh, that's good. Yeah, water can be very inspiring as well. And Tiana says, everything gives me inspiration, really. So Tiana, that's a really good point where you say everything gives me inspiration. That means that you're open. You're exact, doing exactly what we said, was being open to all the ideas, all the possibilities, being inspired, that, that kind of stuff. So that's really good. And Tamia says, Zillow. Zillow? Like the, the house place? That is so cool. Well, you guys can just get inspiration anywhere. You know, think about it. Somebody at some point was looking at either got bit by some ants or was looking at an ant farm or a, like an ant pile and came up with the movie Ants, you know, so you could just get inspired by anything. It's quite remarkable. Let's see, Ben says random weird daily <laughs> incidents. Ben, you are so funny. <laughs> So I was thinking and bass music and counting money. Yes, John. All right. <laughs> Christopher is thinking about all my problems and how I want better. Yep. Yep. That fire. And I've talked about that before. Getting that fire under you, kind of making you want to get out of whatever situation you want, want are currently in or thinking about something that you will want to achieve. It can be very inspiring. I mean, it, think about it. It's a lot of things that get people out of situations that they're uncomfortable with or growing up, if you didn't have much, wanting to always make sure you do better and have a positive outlook on life and do something positive, but provide well for yourself and your family. Those are huge things. So that can be that fire that gets you really um, inspired and gives you that spark to get things done. So that was good. Justin says, listen to uh, hot boxing with Mike Tyson and he goes really deep on sometimes and it inspires me. Oh, that is so awesome. Brian says making music. That is so awesome. You guys, I love how you're so open to a lot of the possibilities that you have in order to be inspired. So thinking about some of that stuff, now we wanna switch gears a little bit and think about some of the resources that allow you to to move forward once you have that inspiration, taking the action once you have that inspiration, moving forward and 
being allowed to do so because you have some of those resources to support you in that motivation, okay? So we're gonna switch gears to that. Mills also says role models and public figures we might have um, we might have aspired to be, which is very true. It's very true. So I used to like that's a good point, Mills. I used to like to watch talk shows and um, not the ones today, but the older ones like Oprah and you know stuff like that. And I used to watch a lot of um, therapy movies <laughs> and shows like Bob Newhart. <laughs> I was so dorky. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> I used to love Bob Newhart and the, like a, a few other uh, psychiatry and psychologist shows. And it really motivated me or inspired me, <laughs> inspired me to go into mental health and uh, psychology. So it can be some of those public figures and things like that. Thank you, Tiana. Yes, they're the best. I, I love stuff like that. Being able to talk to people, talk about what's happening, help them where they are. I love things like that. So when I started watching that when I was younger, it inspired me. So that's just some of the things that we think about in order to kind of see where we want to go in our lives, why we choose these paths that we choose. Um, Jenna says, Bob is a Chicago boy. He is? Yes, yes. And he has a unique sense of humor. He I'm does. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yes, I love him. Uh, I I am from the north side of Chicago, all over Chicago land, and I can t I have just found people who have humor who come from the city of Chicago just have a distinct way of being, uniqueness or quirkiness like yes. Diane, you know, uh, they do totally, totally individual. It's so different, but it's so nice and it's kind of refreshing. So I, I don't know. I just grew up watching it and I agree. There's some, there's like a unique sort of spin they put on things. And then that sense of humor, it's, it's so dry. Like you need some water, but it's Midwestern, nice. <laughs> Midwestern boy, like Indiana, you know, Indiana, Illinois, uh, uh, you know, Bob Newhart, um, Oh, a few others from the Midwest that uh, have, have made it in the in the in the business. Yes, yes, and it's it's pretty awesome to see what that does when you get the opportunity to like really just show people this is what I'm doing and kind of inspire people that you don't even know you're inspiring. You like, who would have thought a little kid that they were inspiring to be in in mental Chicago health? Chicago so, is the yeah. magic city. At least it was to me. It was just so many miraculous things that happened that I saw. It wasn't just me who experienced it, that other people have experienced in the city of Chicago. It's a spirit about it. Okay, now you need to talk. You made me want to go to Chicago. <laughs> oh, I've never now. been to no, Chicago. I, I can't I want to go. go for it now. When I lived there in the early, late 70s, to early 80s, my kids were younger. I was hungry. I was trying to, just trying to live day to day, raise the kids. And um, like I said, it was the magic city. I lived right on the lakefront, Lake Michigan. I could go over there every day and I did. Winter, spring, summer, or fall. I don't care if I went over there 10 times a day, Lake Michigan never looked the same. My nickname for her was the lady. Her. <laughs> the lady changed every whenever she wanted to. Yes, it does. And look, you have somebody else there. Tiana said, yes, yeah, Chicago is sounding fun. You're going to make us take a little field trip. Oh, like okay. I said, I can't vouch for it now. <laughs> You know, <laughs> but back then, you know, it was an instinctive play. You had to have the instincts to be there. You know, you, mm -hmm. I mean, you can't be no wussy person living there. You gotta no. be street smart. You can't, you can't sit around whining about everything. No. You got to keep I grew moving. up on Chicago politics. That is awesome. Well. So Sean says he might have to take a vacation trip there well. with the crew. That is exciting. Well, I'm glad you were able to share that with us because I have never been to Chicago, um, but I do have a few people that I know that are from there, but it's just, it just seems like such a, it's such an exciting it's not, place to at least visit. It's not that way for everybody, because my, well, I'm the only family member of my sisters and my cousins who ever wanted to live there, but I grew up 
in uh, well, 45 miles southwest of there. And I wanted to go to an international city. And one day it dawned on me, oh my God, Chicago is right an international city. And yep. I moved there and my it changed my kids' lives. It changed my life. I'm here today. That is well, awesome. I'm in California now, not in the winter time. Forget the winter time. No, <laughs> winter will kill you. Winter it's will cold kill you. out here. Who is in Chicago? Is that Eric? I'm from Milwaukee, but you know. I, oh, I'm from, oh, I'm I know. I'm, I've been up that way, right there on that lakefront. That wind come off. Yep, it will kill you. Yes, it get cold out here. Very cold. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a Florida girl, so I don't. Well, I'm Southern California. <laughs> I'm sure I now. couldn't take much of that. <laughs> Thank I, you so I much. I came to Southern California and I made it out here by the grace of the good Lord, and I'm here, and I will be here. For the, and I and I got to visit California too, but I I think that um that's one of the great things about this experience is that you get to hear the different um experiences of everybody and how it kind of culminates together in order to allow us to understand how different people get their inspiration their backgrounds and all that other stuff so thinking about Chicago and some of the things that it offers it was a resource it seems like for some of the ideas that people that came from there you know you your surroundings can be a part of your resources oh, yeah. too so yeah. I just I appreciate you sharing that and mm -hmm. as we move into the next part where we think about, hmm, what are the, some of the other resources that we have? So we have surrounding, we have the people, we have the knowledge that we're learning. We also have um, the tangible things like our computers and stuff, but you also have within that realm, no matter where you are as an LA film student, you have some of the resources that we offer you. And the three big ones that we have for this week are the O'Reilly books, the uh, Los Angeles Film School Library, like the school library online, and then also the LinkedIn Learning, which was formerly called lynda.com, but then they changed it to LinkedIn Learning, which sounds much more attainable to everybody. Lynda.com sounds like you're trying to email your auntie or something, but um, when you look into the three resources that we have available, hi, Deandra, don't worry about it. You're good to go. I'm glad you're here. Um, when you look at the three resources that we have in here that we're highlighting this week, I really want you to kind of look at it and understand like, okay, this is what she's talking about with this. And this is how I get to this. You're welcome. <laughs> this is how I access what I need, excuse me, for this week. And right now I'm going to kind of walk you through. Hmm. I'm going to walk you through how to get to the resources. Okay. So can everybody see that? It's the the LMS. I'm in the dashboard for LMS. Okay. So in order to get to these resources, so remember the ones that we're talking about today that we're focusing on are the Los Angeles Film School Library the O'Reilly books and uh, LinkedIn learning. So the first thing that we're gonna go to is the library. So the way that you get there, this is how everybody's LMS looks. So when you click on your picture, you, you right click on your picture, you're gonna go down to where it says library and then you'll just click right there. That's the easiest way to get to the library. Ta-da, yay, we did it. <laughs> so you're gonna go down and while you're in here, this is going to be a part of your um, of your assignment for this week. You're going to have to come in here, go to the subject guide, and then you'll choose one of these subjects. So let's say you choose animation. And once you go into you're you're asked to get a um, a link. So you're asked to go to the library research a link and then provide the link within the workbook. Um, and then you also have to use these resources for other things like your discussion board and other stuff this week. But this is one of the activities. You have to go in there, get the link, and then, um, and then provide the link inside of the workbook. So in order to do that, this is how you get there. And I'm gonna go back so you guys can see it again. Again, you're gonna get to the library, 
from your picture, right click, click library. And then once you're in the library, you're gonna go to subjects guide and this is how you're gonna get your link. Um, you can choose any of these that you want to. i am just happened to choose animation because it's the first one. Once you go in animation, you're gonna go down to where it says the online resources and whatever you choose, it'll say for that thing. So this one says animation online resources. So you can choose one of these online resources Let's choose the action. The, we're gonna choose the first one. So once you come in here, you're like, oh, okay, wow, look at all this. I just love that picture. And you're gonna go down and you can choose one of the articles that are in here. Any article that you like. Once you click on the article, takes a minute, waiting, waiting. Well, once you get on the you click on the article, you're gonna click at the top and get this link. You don't get the link from here, from when you first got in. We don't get that link. And you don't get the link from when you go to the subjects. You get the link from when you get to the article that you want. Do you understand? Everybody get it? That's the link that we need. They have an impressive catalog of screenplay. Yes, they do, Ben. Yes, they do. So you're gonna get that link and you're gonna put it into the workbook or wherever you need to put it for this week. But that's how you get to it. So we're gonna go back. And then I'm just gonna show you all just a couple of the other resources that we have available within the library. I invite you to go through the, the library and really kind of see what, what's in there. Explore, get to know the library. It's your friend. So go in here and kind of see what you like, look through the tutorials and the catalogs and all that good stuff. Really get a feel for what's, what's available in here. But I'm just gonna give you a few things to look out for, which you go through the subject guide and then you go to film. And some of the awesome things that we, that we have available are memberships to different um, streaming options. So we have Crackle. I don't know if you've ever used Crackle, the, the, the streaming um, database. Basically, you just go within Crackle. You, when you log in, you're going to use your LA Film School credentials, and then you're able to stream videos and other things with, within there. And it's going to be free for you. Oh, wow. So yeah, it's very exciting. So everything in here is going to be through LA Film School and it'll be included with your, um, the ones that I know that are included are Crackle and where are you, my friend? Canopy. Canopy is available as well. And you log into there with your LA Film School username and password and you can stream videos and movies or and everything that's in there using your LA Film School credentials. So those are some of the big cool things that we have available within there, they're just, just little highlights. But as you go through, I like I said, I invite you to go through and really get to know how the system works and what's available to you as a student because it, beyond this course, you will need to kind of look up things sometimes. Maybe find an article or things like that in order to support your educational experience and your assignments. So I want you to really know how to get there. So that's why we're doing this real quick. Anybody have any questions? Questions? No? Lovely. No, All not right. yet. Did you have a question? No. OK. So now we're going to go back. We're going to go back to the LMS, right click, and then we're going to go down to LinkedIn Learning. So LinkedIn Learning is going to be quite a treat. Because within LinkedIn Learning, they have the opportunity for you to get certificates and continuing education. So let's see that, let's say that you're in the, like your major for your degree is going to be music production. However, you also want it to kind of learn a little bit more about 
um, something else. Let's say you wanted to learn something about animation or drawing or, or something like that. You can go through LinkedIn Learning and get certificates in different things. You can even get certificates in your, your majors uh, that are available. So let me show you real quick. So they have certifications and then you go through and then you can look up the certifications. And there's also certifications for Adobe, um, for Oracle and a few other things. There are quite a few that are in here. So I just invite you again to go and look through, see what you're interested in and really start to do it. If you have any free time, I mean, the holidays are coming up. Yes, Mills, that is fire. <laughs> So if you do have any uh, free time coming up, you say, well, you know, I don't have anything to do or I have something to do, but I don't do that. So, I, you know, where I have family here and maybe I don't want to be bothered. I don't know. I don't know your life. However, I know these things happen. So you go, oh, I got to do something for school. <laughs> you can go and get a certification <laughs> while everybody's doing whatever they're doing. So when, whenever you have the time to do it, that's something that you can think about doing and it's available and it's free. So it's going to be free for you, which is amazing. I love how they um, really make all this stuff available for you. Okay, Hashan, let's see. So the way that you get there again is you go to you go into the LMS, you're just gonna go to your picture up there at the right, go down to LinkedIn Learning and then click on it. And then you can research subjects. Somebody give me a subject, one of the majors or something. That way I can show you how to get to it. Cinematography. Okay. There we go, cinematography. So there are six courses. And you can go through and do some of the courses. You see? So some of them are learning paths and some of them are just courses. So when you go to become a cinematographer, you see how long the learning path is? It's gonna be seven hours and 44 minutes. So when you look at that, if that's not gonna work out for you, you can pick a different one. However, you could take your time and just go through it slowly and get it done. And then you see here at the end, it says, earn your certificate. When you're done, you'll have earned a certificate of completion. Boom. I'm certified in cinematography. <laughs> you understand? And all these certifications that you can get on your, this, I love the way LA Film School. How do you get to that again? How do you get to that part right there where you get the certified stuff at? Okay, so I I put in cinematography at the top. And then once you get in cinematography, this one says learning path. Let's go to one of these so you can see the difference. Hold on. Hold up. Welcome to this training series. Hold up. Where we um I found it. You, you just it. showed me exactly. Because I want to see if this one gives you a certificate too. Okay, this one does not give you a certificate. So it's the ones that have learning path on it that I believe, because they changed the website a little bit. They used to have them in a certain area, but then, then they changed it because they wanted people to kind of search topics more rather than just certificates. Does that make sense? So it's set up like this now. So when you go into the ones that say learning path on them, where is there another one? Oh, here's another one. Mastering rendering uh, visualization 3D Max. So you see how the course goes all the way down. And then at the end, it says earn your certificate. Those are the ones you look, you're looking for. The first time I tried to go into the, to the LinkedIn uh, portal, it was mm -hmm. just giving me a bunch of things business management. Uh, that's not what I'm here to do. Can you, but so okay. they open. can you, it, does it still happen? Um, I haven't tried it, uh, but uh, I guess I didn't learn about the path to like how to get to like my specific thing that I'm going for. Yeah, so you just so go, gonna... the, go to the top and search it. All right, cool, got it. But if you have any trouble, I mean, 
you could call or message me. However, like I've told you all before, I am not tech support. <laughs> so um, I know, I know, I know psychology. I know psychology stuff. However, I'm not versed on all of the different devices that you all have. And I wouldn't want to do you a disservice by making you waste your time calling me. So if you want to call um, I, MIT, I'm sorry, IMT, then they'll be able to help you get there even faster as well. But this is what you're going to be looking for is the one that says learning path. And they're under everything. A lot of them, a lot of different ones have it. So, so you can put in animation. And you see a lot of these have learning path. The ones that say learning path on there are the ones that will give you a certificate. And I just want you to rack up certificates, okay? I wanna see your resume. And at the bottom, it's just certificate, 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 certificate. It's so exciting. So I want you to try and get as many as you can. You don't have to, but if you can, then why not? You know, Toby says, it's the boom, then laugh for me. Oh. <laughs> Did I say boom? I don't even know what I said anymore. Mercy. I'm sorry. <laughs> so anybody have any questions about this? No? no. Okay. And if you do, you know, you, it's a recording. Y'all can go back to the recording and watch it again. Okay. And if you think, oh, you know what? I may not remember that next class. Download the recording. You know, you can download it, right? Keep it forever. So download the recording if you want to, and then you can always come back and see how to get here and see what you're looking for. I love recording stuff because if I ever forget, I can just come back and look at it. So please download this, this class if you want to, that way you can know how to get to everything. Does anybody have any questions about this? Sean says, where, where is that at? This is gonna be in LinkedIn Learning again. So. When you go, this is the this is the home page for LinkedIn Learning, and then you just put in a subject, any subject, pick a subject, any subject. And again, I'm just gonna pick animation because it starts with an A, like Angel. So you just go in there and you pick one, and then it, like I said, you have to make sure that it says learning path, and then at the bottom, once you're done, and it tells you how long it should take. Good Lord, 22 hours. Um, this one's 22 hours. However, <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but you're going to learn a lot in those 22 hours. So buckle up. That'll be exciting. But once you're done, you'll get their certificate. And a lot of people do need the 2D digital animator certificate. So if that's something that you want in order to just broaden your horizons a little bit, I say go do it. And it's for, for, for free, for free. So that's something to look forward to. Okay, if nobody has any questions, we are gonna move forward to the next one. So I don't go over the time too much because I just adore you guys and I go over the time sometimes. Okay, the next one is O'Reilly Books. Just one second, I gotta log in. Please let me know if you have any questions about anything that we have already discussed. All righty. So this is going to be the O'Reilly books. So when you go in, you'll be able to look through, search for books within your major. You'll be able to research different articles. Again, looking at articles and other things, but mostly it has a wide array of books and a huge library of books for you all to look at. As you can see, I was researching a site of the psychology book by DK because that's my thing. But um, if you want, you could just, you know, research what you need, look into the different stuff that they have available, see what you might want to read on your spare time or, you know, during the holiday or anything that you, you know, you might have it available. But you also will have it available in case you need to look anything up for your classes. Okay. So it's, it's going to be just a, a, a big plethora of things for you to look through, a lot of resources for you to have at your disposal. And then we like to make sure that you understand, hey, this stuff is here for you. It's available with your student um, experience, and it's not going to be anything new for you. 
So uh, let's see, Hashan says, do we have a free trial? The whole thing is free. When you go into um, when you go into LinkedIn Learning, it's included with your with your student experience. You don't have to pay for that, Hashan. Isn't that awesome? So that's why I'm showing it to you, so you all can know. Hey, I have this available. If I um, if I need to use it, I can. You know that good stuff. So that's why I wanted to make sure you all knew that it was there. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to go over really quick. Is. Well, where is it? One moment. Oh, there it is. Is your workbook. So for this week, your workbook is going to be a lot of links. The reason why I like to go over this is because I don't want anybody to miss any of the links and then not get any of the, the points, okay? It's not gonna be a whole lot of writing. However, there are links. So I really want you to look through and make sure that you get the links that it's asking for, okay? So you know you gotta read through everything, read, read, read. And then the first one says, after watching the video, identify a good place online or physical, which is in person, that you can explore to help spark inspiration. So that's not a link. However, you got to make sure you answer that completely. Can't just put one word outside. No, it needs to be a complete answer. Okay. It doesn't have to be like eight paragraphs, but it does need to be at least a couple of sentences or something. So make sure you answer everything completely. I just don't like giving people any points off because something wasn't answered. So you're going to read through this, all of this, very interactive and then when you get here to page four that's the next place you're filling out so you see you're going to one and you're going to go all the way down to four because that's the next place to fill out and it asks you provide um explore the event calendar for la film school events and provide a link to an event that interests you i need the link sometimes people will describe the link or describe the event to me to the T, that is very nice. However, it is asking you for the link. So I need you to put the link or I can't give you the, the, the total credits for that, okay? So just make sure you read it and do exactly what it's asking you to do. Some of us get so excited about what it says that we forget to put the link. So I just don't want that to happen. And then we're gonna mosey on down to page eight. That's the next place, you see? There's like a lot of reading read, 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 not a whole lot, but you're going to go through, you see it talks about some of your other resources with your student advising, IMT, which is the, the tech support that we talked about, and let's see, you're going to go on down to page eight, and here it says, after reviewing the student advising video on page six, identify three ways advising can be a resource, so that's not a link, but I need the three ways, and then you're gonna go on down. And then here is it asks you about uh, which department with LA Film School can you contact for help? Department, not person. So make sure you have the department, the phone number and the email, and then when they're open. A lot of people put IMT because it's right here. Department, phone number, email, open. Boom. You see? If you don't wanna use that one, feel free to research one and have one available. And then we also have advising. Their information is there too. They don't have any hours. So I think that's why a lot of people pick IMT. Anyway, you're gonna put that information right there on page eight. Then you're gonna mosey on down to page nine. And this one asks you to copy and paste the link you chose for step four. Step four is what I went over, which was when we went to the library, the library, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Okay, um, so when we went to the library and we researched the thing and we looked up the, the subject guides and then I told you, you have to make sure you go down to the program and look up a resource, the resources that are right under that. And then you're gonna click on that and then you're gonna choose the link after you get to the actual article that you're looking at, okay? So that's what we were doing when we did the whole library thing. Questions? No. Nope. Okay. And then once you're done with that, the last page is page 10. 
page 10 goes in line with the uh, LinkedIn learning that we just did, how we went through all of that. So this one's asking you for another link. So nine was a link, this one's a link. Copy and paste the link to the, to, um, to the tutorial that you chose. And step two, we talked about a tutorial. And then um, number two is you're gonna choose, you're gonna tell us why you chose that tutorial. Why did it interest you? How can it inspire you, uh, inspire your creativity? So make sure you put the link in one and explain it in the second one. And it's not one word, I like it, or yay, or whatever. Just make sure you explain it because otherwise I'll take some points off and I don't want to do that. Uh, quick question, uh, is there any uh, word count criteria? Is that kind of at our own discretion? I'm sorry? Is there any word count, uh, I'm sorry, word count criteria or is that our own discretion? Oh, no, no, there's no word count criteria. However, I just want to make sure, thank you for asking that, Ben. I just want to make sure that they are complete answers. Like when you get to page one, I just don't want one outside. You know, I like to go outside because it inspires me. I like to hear, feel the breeze on my face and look at people passing by, whatever it may be. You see how that was just like two or three sentences, but it was complete. Does that make sense? So thank you for asking, but that's what I'm looking for. There is no word count criteria, but I do want you to write a college level answer because you are all in school now. And I want to make sure that you're in the understanding of this is what I'm doing. I'm writing like this because this is where I am now. Um, and we're also make sure, please, please, please make sure that you check your grammar, please. <laughs> I don't want to everybody's been doing pretty good with it I've had a couple of people not look at the grammar so much but if you're writing on your phone tablet wherever I don't know make sure you check it with Grammarly or just make sure that those eyes are capitalized they are not you're not submitting run-on sentences sentences should not be for three and four lines with no period exclamation point or anything punctuation related they need to have punctuation they should start with a capital letter. Thank you, Tamia. Grammar is very important. Like I told y'all, I don't want you to leave this space with me <clears throat> and not be aware of grammar. I don't care what you're doing. I don't know if you're in the studio or where you are. You're gonna be the smartest studio person that's there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got a question. Yes. Uh, what? So, uh, how do I complete this other part though, right here? Which part? The, the part where it say to complete the live class, you got to answer this question about the content. Oh, we're going to go over that in just a second. So we're everybody's good with the workbook. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. Actually, no, you know that one part at, at like page two when it asks you to watch the video, the video won't come up for me. Like it come up and then it's just like a plain black screen. This one on page one? Yeah. For me. Okay. Hmm. I don't know what if it do it for anybody else, but it definitely giving me that issue. Are you doing it on a phone or a computer or a tablet? No, I did I was doing it on my computer this morning, but um mm -hmm. usually when I do it on my phone, I don't have as many complications as as my computer give me. Like I don't know. You know what you could probably try to do is watch the video on your phone and then answer it in your computer. Okay. You yeah. that. However, I mean when you look at the question, you might be able to, you know. I'm not gonna say what I'm uh, Watching the video um, lesson, identify a good place online or physical that you can explore to help spark inspiration. So if you have any trouble watching the video, some of the things that usually come to mind are outdoors, um, you know, being outside um, helps to spark inspiration, watching uh, YouTube videos of other creators helps to spark inspiration, things like that. So that's just something to think about. Hopefully you'll be able to look it up on your phone and then um, just answer it through your computer. But if you yeah, have any trouble, then that's, that's something to think about. Okay. Actually, the class all in all, I don't, I don't think I'm going to watch the video because this whole conversation is explains it. So I get it from this, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> and I shall never tell you not to watch the video. However, I just want to make sure you understand that that's a part of it. So in case you have any questions or trouble watching it. And I'm so sorry you're experiencing that. Anybody else have any questions about the workbook? Okay, it's gone. 
Okay, so we're going to go right back into our All right, so we're almost done. So again, one of the resources and it's in the workbook is IMT. So that's gonna be your tech support. Again, I do not do tech support. I would love to be able to do it, but I don't. So I'm very thankful that I'm good at what I'm good at, but I would like for you all to contact the people that are amazing when it comes to tech support, when you have those issues, any, whatever it may be, you can't download something, you can't access something, you're having trouble doing it. And then you just let me know, Miss Angel, I'm not able to get in this. I might need some extra time, whatever. But just keep in mind, the extra time does not coincide with the fourth week. There is no extension available for the fourth week. Weeks one through three, we have, like, if you have an extenuating circumstance, oh, I worked late, you know, somebody got sick, this and that, usually we're able to accommodate you. It's usually due on Sunday, everything but the discussion board. The discussion board is due. So your first post is due, your initial post is due Wednesday, the, the rest of it is due by Sunday. You, know, you all know that I really encourage you to get everything done before Friday. So that initial post needs to be done by, by Wednesday. And then if you can please get your reply, your reply to a classmate, which needs to be at least two or three sentences, it can't just be one word or one sentence or a question like, what was that about? I mean, it needs to be a complete thought. Um, so <laughs> you're killing me, Ryan. <laughs> I'm trying to keep a, a straight face. <laughs> Okay, it needs to I get distracted me. real easily. <laughs> Does anybody else see Ryan? <laughs> okay. Um, what happened? It's okay. He was like, he was mixing his mustache in the camera <laughs> for like five minutes. <laughs> okay. Between, between the kids running around and me getting distracted, man, I'm all over the place. <laughs> yes. It's okay. Thank you. That was, I'm glad I got that laugh. Though. I appreciate it. It looks great, by the way. It's good. I laugh at your snort all the time. So <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Justin. <laughs> you told my own my school is lit. <laughs> well, thank you. I think that's good. <laughs> um, but so I want you all to think about that. If you have any questions or anything like that, please contact them and they'll be able to help you with that. And their hours are amazing. So make sure you contact um, online support for anything that you may have. And then just like I said, let me know as your instructor, this is what's happening. However, like I was saying with week four, week four, there is no Sunday deadline. And then you get a couple of extra days for the 1.1 and 1.4 assignments. There is no extra because what happens is with week four, the the class is over that Sunday. And then usually that next day, you're starting a new class. So because of that, they don't want compounding work. So you don't get an, that two or three day extension on week four stuff. The only thing that you get, and I'm just letting, telling you now, that way you know a week in advance. The only thing you get for week four is um, if you have an extenuating circumstance, I mean, something big, and I don't want anybody to have any, any of these things except birth. I've had people who have, you know, given birth and they're like, oh, I just had a baby, you know, I can't, you know, it came early, you know, that kind of stuff. I don't want you to be in there trying to have children and type and stuff. It's not fun, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> so I don't want you to do that. However, there are people that have been in car accidents and things. I really hope nobody has to experience anything like that. But those are the kind of circumstances that would warrant you to have any sort of extension on week four. And it's not a normal extension. You have to submit a form to the program director and they have to review it, review your coursework, and then give you an answer. So to avoid all of that, I always ask my students to just try to get everything in before that, that Friday. The, the week four, just try to get everything in before that Friday because you never know what comes up on the weekend. You never know any of that. So again, the, <clears throat> the discussion is always due Sunday. So we're gonna go to that now, your discussion board. So this is your discussion question for this week. It's always due um, 
it's always due that Wednesday. Your initial post is due Wednesday. Sorry, I think I said Sunday. It's due Wednesday. And then your reply to a, to a classmate can be done by Sunday. But I said, a lot of people just do it that Wednesday. They see somebody else's stuff, they reply to it, they move on with their life. I want you to do that. I want it to be a memory. I want you to do it. And now it's a memory. I'm done. So if you could do that. And then if you could do that with your other things too, make sure you get it done before the end of the week. That would be great. So this week, um, the goal is to kind of go over an explanation of what you <clears throat> what you chose that inspired you. So not it says for for the first for this week, <clears throat> you know I'm gonna have an uh, an example in there. So read over the example and make sure you understand what I'm asking you for. And then that's that's really a good idea of what I'm expecting for you to hand in. Okay. So an explanation of what you chose and how and, and how it inspired you. That's what I'm, I want you to think about for this week. It's kind of a show and tell. You're going to get your initial post in by Wednesday. You're going to discuss what you're going to discuss and then make sure you get your, your reply in hopefully before the end of the week. That's not the due date, but that's just the hope date. Okay, any questions for that? No. So resources are all around you. I really want you to understand how attainable all of this stuff is and how you really have so many things around you in order to help you get to where you need to get, either with your creativity or your inspiration or your motivation. <laughs> They're everywhere. Excuse me. So this lecture hopefully was a reminder to you of that and how you can find the things that you need in order to be inspired. And also how you have the ability to really help yourself stay within that mode of being inspired and motivated to do what you need to do. So keep in mind, as we answer the live question for this week, what that means to you. Because this week, your live question, and this is what you were asking about. I think it was, Jeremiah, was that you? Ask about the live question. Are you there? So this is the live question for this week. How can LAFS alumni serve as a resource or source of inspiration? This is our live question for this week. And you all know it's gonna be, it's in the live area. It's already there. Now the, the recording isn't there yet because we're still doing it. However, this is gonna be your live question for this week. If you happen to be doing a live question and it stops for a minute, it's because the recording, I have to go in there and download the recording for people who didn't get a chance to come to the class today. However, this is what we're looking for. Does anybody have any questions about this? And as you see at the top, it says you're gonna read the whole top. After attending the live class or watching the recording, visit the alumni success page here. You're gonna click there because it's a live link right there to read the LAFS Distinguished Alumni, then respond to the question in the completion field below. And I want you all to keep in mind, I think we talked about this. You know that we just had, was it the Emmys? Yeah, it was the Emmys. And I told you all that over 20 of the Emmy recipients were alumni from LA Film School. Isn't that amazing? So you have some really good stuff. They're not in, I don't think they're in the alumni page yet because, you know, the image just happened. However, these are the kind of um, results that you can see. Okay, we're doing some great things here. They're, we're learning some really good things that can really help me get to where I, I want to go or need to go. Didn't even think about going, but maybe I can make it there. So I really want you all to think about that because that alumni page can be such a source of inspiration and motivation. Okay, anybody have any questions? Anybody? All yeah. right. Well, I think we are good. Awesome people. If nobody has any questions, questions? No. No. When the um the tech kit go come by, you know. The tech kit, um, so that's one of those things that you have to contact <clears throat> IMT for. They ship out Wednesday. 
Okay. It's different for everybody though. So oh, okay. The, and I'm glad you said that. Thank you. Because the, the thing is, I want you remember, I think we talked about this the first class is that the tech kit is is one of those things that you have to make sure that you're checking your student email. Your LA, your LAF your lafilm.edu <clears throat> email because a lot of times they'll send you notices through there they'll also <coughs> send you um verifications of your address all sorts of things through your student email so some of you may have messages in there that are asking you about your email or something and if you haven't answered it i don't want it to delay you getting your tech kit does that make sense yeah so make sure you check your student email and make sure everything is good there. And if you have any questions about when it's coming, so he said it's gonna be coming soon. But if you have any qu any questions about when it's coming past that, please do not hesitate to contact IMT and they can help you figure that out as well. And they'll let you I just, know if you're missing I, anything. I just directly called the distribution center, honestly. Uh, they they said that uh, if you already answered the the confirmation and all that stuff they said it ships out wednesday for people outside of california but if people inside of california it ships out friday yes thank you ryan we appreciate okay. that thank you and then justin made a really good point like i was saying the e he said he received this email and make sure you confirm your email address confirm your email address and your your home address because think about it they're sending out a very expensive kit of stuff and it behooves them to double check your, your home address before they send it to you to make sure that the right person is receiving it. Because I don't know very many people that are going to return a whole tech kit. Like, oh, you got it to the wrong place. No. So, <laughs> no, right, right? <laughs> so you got to make sure that you check your, your uh, email to, and then make sure that your, your address is confirmed. Some students have moved since they signed up. Some students, and I know it's only like a month or so, but you never know. So they like to make sure they confirm that. Okay. Yeah, I had just moved like last week. Yes. See? So make sure you check your student email so that you can confirm your address. Everybody, right. please do that. Because I don't want and anybody to be delayed. And definitely yeah. call distribution center. I mean, because yes. if not, they're not going to send it. Yes. What is um, that number, by the way? Uh, distribution center. I might be able to find it real quick. Hold on. Okay, no problem. I got a question real quick. Is that homework assignment that you was just telling us that you was just giving us? Is that is that on a on a um one point one? Yes, the live question. Yes, the live question is the one point one. So you will have four assignments every week. Right. It's one point one. It's a point one, point two, point three, point four. And just the, the front number changes. So this week it'll be 3.1. So no, what I'm asking is I tried to screenshot and it kicked me out to oh. get the question. So is that question it's 3.1? Okay, 3.1. I don't it's it's on 3.1. Yes, ma'am. When you go okay. in 3.1, the video isn't there now, but it will be. Um, and once you go in 3.1, usually it'll have the video a little ex explanation of what you need to do. And then when you go down to the bottom, it'll have your question. And I believe I have it highlighted in yellow. Let me go ahead and stop the recording. I'm so glad you all were able to come today. And if you wanna stay for the information that Ryan has, then you can stay for that, or you can look it up online as well. If you like to- All right, I got that. you. It's, uh, Thank y'all so much. I'm gonna stop the recording. Yeah, you're good.